Hello fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Games. Welcome to the EOG Gaming Bunker. And today you're invited here because we're going to be working on making some terrain tiles for miniature wargaming. In this particular case we're going to be making them for Helderado, but these techniques can be applied to any miniature wargame of course. Now these tiles are going to be 300mm square or about a foot square and I'm making nine of them for a total three foot by three foot area. Now, I must point out that I've never actually made terrain tiles using these techniques before, but we're going to go on a little bit of a journey together and see what happens. I'm sure we'll make some mistakes along the way, but I think at the end we should come up with some fantastic terrain that will look incredible on your tabletop. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in one of these high fashion items and Esoteric Order of Gamers t-shirt, just hold on a little bit longer because I'm currently sourcing some places to get these made. Soon, hopefully, I'll make them available for sale on the website. Okay, so let's skip through some of the basic steps because they're pretty easy and you don't need me to show you all uh, the details of how to do them. So, the first thing I've got is an MDF base. Now, I'll be um, sticking the foam to this base and it makes it nice and solid. So, obviously I've got a large sheet of this uh, MDF board. Um, this particular stuff is, let's just check, it is 5mm uh, thick. You can get a thicker board if you want to, but I think this is a nice size. It's not too heavy, but it's nice and solid, um, especially for tiles this size. Now, I should point out is that you can make larger tiles if you want. You could have two foot by two foot tiles. Um, I'm using one foot by one foot because, as I said, I'm only making a three foot by three foot table, and I want nine modular tiles. So I cut these out of the uh, MDF using a jigsaw, like so. Now, I experimented with various ways of doing this. For the woodworkers among you, it'll be no problem. I'm not a woodworker at all. Um, and initially I stuck down a piece of down and I clamped it and I had a straight line. What I did in the end is put this off the edge of the table so I could uh, keep it nice and firmly down. And I had my line drawn and I really just cut it by eye. Now of course, all the way through this process, safety is first, be very careful, don't chop off any fingers or anything like that. We're using blades and um, sharp things and all kinds of nasty tools that can do horrible damage to you. So be very careful. Now, um, I did that by hand and I got some very nice straight lines. So, I cut out nine of these boards and the next thing I did was get my foam. Now, this fantastic stuff is called multi-use foam board. It's an extruded polystyrene, lightweight strong, high water resistance, high compressive strength, um, high thermal insulation performance, whatever. But as you can see, it's quite compressed. It's not that very light um, polystyrene with the bubbles in it. It's quite strong. So I got my tiles, put it on my board like so, and then using a nice sturdy craft knife, I carefully cut straight down and cut out my squares of foam, making sure I get a nice 90 degree angle, nice straight. I had my foam, I had my MDF, now I've got to stick them together like so. This was stuck with this stuff, which is called uh, water-based adhesive, solvent-free, low odour, um, works very well with foam. You could also use white glue, I don't know if that's as strong, but this was very easy to use because it's spray adhesive. So I sprayed a bit on the board, a bit on the foam, stuck them together, and then I put a heavy box on top of it and left them overnight to dry. And after I'd done that, this is what I ended up with. As you can see, there's our MDF board, there's our foam, nice and firmly stuck together. The next thing to do is to make sure this has a nice flat surface. And I use a bit of coarse sandpaper, a sanding block, wrap that together, and preferably outdoors because a lot of stuff will come off this. Sand that nice and flat. In fact, while you're sanding, gluing, spraying, doing all those things, use one of these to protect your lungs. You can also do Darth Vader impressions. So, Sand that down and you'll get a nice smooth surface like this one. As you can see, the wood is nicely flush with the foam. It's nice and straight. And there's our basic tile. So there we are, folks. That took a bit of elbow grease, but I've sanded all of the edges of these terrain boards now. And here you can see them all fitted together. The reason these ones are higher is because I had foam in that size, but we can add bits later on to make higher bits. We'll get into that later. Now, the other thing here is that Sometimes the gaps are quite wide between these and we want to minimize these gaps as much as possible without being too obsessive about it. So the reason that there is a gap here is because the angle 
of that edge is probably not quite 90 degrees. As you can see, it's coming in towards the left a bit there. So I could sand the bottom of this so the angle is more like this, very subtly, and that should make things join up a lot cleaner. You can see this is a different edge and that's a cleaner join. But I'm not going to obsess about it too much. Now occasionally you might have a little mistake and a bit of foam might chip off. Again, don't worry about that. We'll be putting some gap filler in any errors like this later on and fixing them up. So, that's the basic steps. After we have nine of these, we can start thinking how are we going to design our modular board. This is the tricky part. Now, of course, the trick with modular terrain is that everything has to line up because you want to arrange these in different ways to get different terrain setups. What you do is make sure everything lines up halfway through each tile. So, I measure halfway along the tile on every side. And that way, if I cut into these tiles or build hills on top of them that are going to be stuck to the foam, anything that's a permanent part of the tile, I can make sure that they always line up at the exact halfway point. And then it doesn't matter how I set up my modular tiles, things will always line up. Okay, it's time to go to the drawing board or to the drawing computer if you prefer. As you can see, I've got little 3x3 three three cubes here and I've put a few hilly areas on them and then I've moved them around to see the different combinations I can get with those. Now, these ones up here are nine um, tiles and variations you can get. And these are another three variations I can get if I add another corner tile. So you can see I get quite a lot of variety there. Now, you can do anything you like, of course. You can also come up with modular river systems or if you prefer chasms filled with lava or whatever you're going to do. Uh, at the moment I'm not going to put any rivers in this because I want to keep it relatively simple but later on if I make more tiles I can add things like that. At the moment I'm just coming up with a uh, nice amount of elevated um, scenery. So I'm going to use this as the basis for mucking around with those foam tiles. Right, it might be a little bit tricky to see but I've just inscribed my rough hills into the tiles there and now I can play around with these and see how they look. Just imagine them with the hills on them. Um, another one here, I'm going to do some uh, fissures in here, um, probably with some lava in the bottom and over here I'm going to have sort of a sunken road with some um, rock shards coming out of it. Before you start setting up your terrain and thinking about what you want to do, go online and see what other people have done and um, see if you can get some inspiration, not only from other terrain types, but also from artwork. So now that I've got these roughly marked on these tiles, I can move them around a bit and see what kind of layouts I'm going to be able to get with this setup. I've tried various ways of making the hill scenery on these tiles, and I've come up with a way that I'm most happy with. First, I tried this technique. Now this was a thicker tile, and I chopped into it, as you can see, and I put another piece on top, glued it on top, and I chopped into that, and I'm chopping away. And I haven't finished chopping on this one, but you get this very packed in effect. This is all done with a knife. Um, it's not too bad. The problem is, is that you can go too low here and find that it doesn't match up with your tiles perfectly. Um, and you get a very rough effect, and then you've got to sand it down. It's very labor intensive. So that's okay. Not crazy about it. Not crazy about the sudden transition as well from um, the chopped off area to the flat. That's a bit too artificial for me. So that's one approach. This is another approach um, which I discovered online and I think it's quite effective. I do have another piece uh, stuck on there as usual. I did chop into it and then I chopped into it even more and I glued on pieces of bark. And you can see I put them in sort of strata like this and then I used a lot of gap filler to fill in the gaps and mold it down so it actually rises up there. And I think this is more realistic. It looks interesting. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to look until it's all painted and, and blended in, but I think this is a more realistic rock face and a bit more interesting. It's not as artificial looking. And finally, there's this approach. And this is where, as you can see, again, I put another piece on top. Now I cut this piece roughly in a ragged way here, put it down and then I filled it with little pieces here which I've just glued on and then I'm going to 
smooth out that transition with gap filler as well. So some interesting different approaches to the problem. I think a mixture of this approach and this approach is the most effective. Um, I think this approach is a little bit too labour intensive, a bit artificial looking in the end. I like using the bark to give me my cliff faces, but um, actually digging into the thicker foam is too labour intensive. So finally to sum that up, I recommend getting all your tiles of the same thickness, the lowest thickness you'll be having on your board, and then to get height glue on extra pieces which you've already shaped roughly before gluing them on and then you can fill it out with bits and use gap filler and smooth it all down and go as realistic as you want adding in pieces of bark as well if you want to. With that out of the way let's get on with making these hills. Okay my friends let's build a hill section together. So here's my basic board here's the piece I'm going to put on top it's a, just an offcut and I'll put it on the edge here and I'll roughly put a line where those halfway points are. There we go. And then I'll just say, okay, this is kind of what the top is going to look like. Now I can cut into this with a nice sharp knife, but an alternative is to use a hot wire cutter like this. What you do with this is that there's a thin wire across here, it's plugged in, it heats up the wire and it slices through foam really quickly and easily. Again, this is one of those times you might want to wear a mask because it does give off fumes when it cuts through the foam. Turn this on and then I'll just slowly slice through the foam. And you can see that's a lot faster and easier than using a knife. And there's my rough piece. When you're doing any cutting, remember to save all these pieces because they can be used as filler and for carving out little rocks and all kinds of things. So save all those pieces in a container. There we go, I've stuck that down. And it doesn't matter if you don't line up these sides, you can sand that down and get that nice and flush later on. The important thing is, is to get it roughly lined up with the halfway marks that you've made on the tile. It's my very basic hill. Now I'll put a heavy weight on top of this and let it dry before I do anything more. Let's move now to a tile I did earlier. And as you can see, I'm using spec filler or gap filler to smooth out this um, hill area some more. Now I've also stuck in some bits of spare foam there to smooth out the gradient a little bit and um, you can use um, pins and white glue to stick that down. Now after putting some um, gap filler down I'm also getting my box of bark and bits of bark give you that um, realistic um, stone texture so I'm sticking those in place um, and putting more gap filler around them. Also using a bit of white glue to keep those bark pieces in place. All this is going to need some serious drying time. You should probably leave it overnight at least, possibly more if you can, so it really dries well. And then I use more and more of the gap filler and just smoothing out the gradient and smothering it in all the gaps and also the trick here is to put it over the top of the bark a bit so it looks like the rock is just peeking out from the grass or whatever surface we're going to put on top of this. When we texture the whole tile it's going to look much more realistic when it looks like the grass or, or ashes or whatever the terrain is has covered over the uh, rocks and they're just peeking out a bit. So be creative, just fiddle around with it until you're happy with the effect. I wanted a shallow gradient here and I think this is looking pretty good.